think one day of the year predicting okay, the weather based on the whims of a rodent. Not ringing a bell? This guy has been supposedly predicting the weather for centuries. All good weather, it, it sees its own shadow. That's right, today is Groundhog Day and I'm Alfonsina. Hello, DSA. The first official Groundhog Day celebration took place on February 2nd, 1887 in Puxa 20, Pennsylvania. It has roots in pre-Christian traditions and was brought to the U.S. by German immigrants in some parts of Europe. If the celebration of Candlemas was sunny, it meant 40 more days of cold and snow. How they determined this was by if badgers and other small animals glimpsed their shadows. The day would neither be pronounced as a sunny day. When they immigrated to the States in the 18th and 19th centuries, they continued this tradition. It will become official when the local newspaper editor, Flimmer Freeze, so the group of local businessmen and groundhog hunters, known collectively as the Punk Saturni Groundhog Club, on the idea. Since then, the yearly festivities are led by a group of local dignitaries known as the Inner Circle. This group dons top hats and conduct the proceedings in the local Pennsylvania Dutch town, supposedly freaking to the groundhog in Groundhog S. Puxatawney Phil, the star of this celebration, was named after King Philip. Prior to being called Phil, he was called Burry Groundhog. He lives in his burrow, a man-made zoo that is climate-controlled and lights-regulated. It is connected with Barsley Square, the town park, and the Puxatawney Memorial Library. There has only been one Puxatawney Phil. He has been making predictions since 1886. Puxa 20 Phil gets his longevity from drinking this exir of life, a secret recipe Phil takes one sip every summer at the groundhog picnic. And, and it magically gives him seven more years of life. This tradition tries to predict whether there will be six more weeks of winter or if it's sunny days lie ahead and is celebrated in the United States and Canada. How can you celebrate this day? You could watch a documentary on groundhogs to learn more about these lovable marmots. My favorite is to watch the 1993 film Groundhog Day. And then watch it again. Trust me, once you've watched it, you'll understand. You'll know why. Or you can watch the festivities online or travel to Punks 20 yourself. Maybe you can look for your own shadow and make your prediction. Also, you can post in social media with the hashtag National Groundhog Day. I'm Alfonsina reporting for Create TV. We are Caden and Nathan, anchors for Create TV. animal rights. In other words, the rights that non-human creators have. For that, we are interviewing someone directly concerned about this topic, Wrigley, the dragon from Mr. Merton's classroom. Wrigley, could you say hi to the students? How do I cut it? Yeah, please. Excellent. Now we can start with this important topic. Most countries define animal rights as the freedoms and treatments animals deserve. What are some examples of the rights, Wrigley? Really? Example of how the students can help to protect the animal rights. Another right will be to supply their basic needs, like food, water, a home, medical care, some objects to entertain and exercise them, and of course, so much love. What's your favorite food, Riley? Right, 
Mmm, that sounds delicious. If you're planning to adopt a pet or you already have one, you should take some time to do a little research about the specific needs of that type of animal to make sure you provide them with everything they need. For example, I have six cats and I know that cats can't drink milk because their stomachs can process lactose and other substances present in milk. So don't give your pets any human food if you don't know they can eat that. But pets are not the only animals who have those rights. Scientists have demonstrated the similarities that we have with other creatures, like the 98% of chimps' genetic makeup that we humans share with them, and the cognition they possess. Also, India has officially declared dolphins non-human persons, whose right to life and liberty must be respected. However, recognizing them as living beings who feel and have conscience, even if, even if they don't have as much conscience as we do, is the first step to respect other creatures and understand that our difference doesn't make them less important than we humans. Thank you for your time, Wrigley.